What is up YouTube, it is your boy Shogo and um, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different since this was really really highly requested. We are finally making a coaching video. Uh, so please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video and if you like these kind of videos then we'll make a lot more of them. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a good day. Peace. Okay, perfect. Um, let's fast forward a little bit and see what happens here. Uh, I did this not try fine. for double axis going to lane here. Um, so it's it's hard to do um, when you're leashing red buff because there's not enough time to go from here to lane with double axes. Um, okay. Blue buff it's easier because it's shorter, right? Okay. You you, yeah. you can make it, but um, from red buff you shouldn't try because you're gonna lose your axe. Okay. Um, so yeah, you kind of overleashed. Generally speaking, you only want to give five auto attacks. And you waste a lot of time clearing this, and then oh. go one, two, three. Yeah, so you leave at 140. Realistically, you want to be leaving at like 136-ish. And the oh. reason why is against better players, they would just wait in this bush and pull the wave. Yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. What, okay. Yeah. What might happen is they would sit here, and then one person would um, get out of the bush. And you can use this trick. It's, it's very effective. What you would want to do is sit in this bush until these minions show up. And then you walk slightly out of the bush. You mm -hmm. let the minions auto attack you for a little bit. And then when this caster minion, the second caster minion in the wave is in your auto attack range, you auto attack it once and you go into the bush. Right? Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. That's, that's all it takes. Um, the reason why you auto attack this minion is to pull aggro. Now, once you pull aggro, once you auto attack this minion, all of these minions are going to focus you. And then once mm -hmm. you step into the bush, they're going to look for, for a new target. Mm -hmm. And this minion by then will be close enough. So they will all, f all focus this minion. Okay. Okay. Right? So what you're yeah. hoping to achieve ultimately, your goal is for this one minion to die. Because what happens then is that they miss experience, and that is crucial. And we'll talk, we'll talk more about experience and why it's so important. Uh, but for now, just remember that one level of XP is worth roughly 600 gold of combat stats. Uh, so you get armor, you get AD, you get attack speed, you get health, mana. Um, all these things have gold values, right? And these values add up to about 600 gold on average. Okay, that's so, pretty huge. Yeah. yeah, so by doing this, you're delaying their level up by two minions because one milli minion is worth two caster creeps. One milli minion is, uh, is 60 experience and one caster is 30. So when they lose this 60 experience, how, how long does it take uh, to level up generally? When, when do you level up in bot lane to level two? Uh, it's two waves, right? So it's one, one wave and then the first three milli minions. So by denying this, um, you're forcing them to need two more minions because all that will be left by then is the two is the, is the three caster creeps. So they're gonna need to kill two of them to head level two. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what happens then is you get level two almost guaranteed sooner uh, than, than they do because they have to kill two more two more minions than you do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so far so good. We missed one minion. That's not the end of the world. At the end of the day, I don't really care if you miss minions. I care more if you miss XP. Because um, when you miss last hits, it's going to take a while until that affects you, if that makes sense. Because in order for them to use the gold advantage that they may have, they're going to have to find a reset, a good reset, and get their items and come back into lane. But if yeah. you lose experience, um, they're going to level up and instantly have the extra stats, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's why experience lead is so, so broken. Because as soon as you level up, you, you, you have a window of opportunity where you can fight again, right? That's why, right. That's why people fight for level 2, because it, it gives them a window to all in. Because being level 2 to level 1 is such a big, big deal, right? Yeah. Um, so... What I advise you to do, if you don't have this box ticked right here, the experience box, mm -hmm. um, have it ticked. And if you're struggling, 
um, with knowing what the mini XP range is. Um, I want you to go into practice tool with this box ticked and then try to see how far you can stand while still getting the experience. Yeah. Okay, so oh, just, I, where gonna... the little gray number where it shows like yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have that ticked, yeah. Uh, so okay. what you would do is just load into the um, practice tool game, make sure the box is ticked, and then try to stand as far back as possible. You're not going to hit the minions or anything. You're just going to really test to see how far you can stand while still getting XP. And that's that's very crucial in lanes like the one you mentioned where you're struggling against poke. It's really, yeah. really important that you stay safe um, but still get the XP. Getting gotcha. XP is, is, is the most important thing. And if the enemy poke lane can force you out of XP range, that's going to be their ultimate goal is to, is to get a level lead. All right, um, right. So... Mm -hmm. In order to deny that, we have to be very familiar with how, how far exactly we can stand. Because we want to stay safe, but we also don't want to drop any XP. Right here, you know Sivir is going to go for this, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of doing this, why not stand here and punish her for it? Right. Yeah. Right? Playing Draven, you have to um, be able to recognize these situations where you have a low HP minion that you know they're going to contest. Yeah. Uh, because one auto attack from you is is a pretty good punishment. Th th think of it this way. One potion heals for 120 HP, right? You deal... Okay, so you did about 100 damage, right? Yeah. Almost 100 damage. So if one potion is 120 HP and it costs 50 gold, by taking away 100 HP from them, you're essentially making them lose about about 40 gold. Does that make sense? Right. Like you, you need to put a, a gold value on everything. Everything, everything has a gold value. Health has a gold value uh, because of potions, and experience has gold value because of the t the stats that it gives. Right. So right. Yeah, there yeah. are other ways to get advantages than just throwing a CS lead or getting kills on your opponents. Does that make sense? Right. Um, yeah, so we really want to be looking for those type of trades when there's um, minions that we know they're going to contest. Basically, what you're saying is don't give them gold value for free, even if it's not literal gold. Yeah, we okay. don't want to let them go unpunished with anything. Okay. So, so far, you played this lane pretty well, all things considered. And now you have to stop and think... What is my goal for this laning phase? You're obviously winning, right? Mm -hmm. Matchup is good for you. You have an HP advantage. You can get pushed whenever you want. Now you have to stop and think, what do I want to achieve? Um, probably try to deny the CS from them at this point, right? Okay, so how would you go about doing that? We, okay. want, we want to deny them CS. That's the most important thing, right? We already established that um, deny, being able to deny them XP is yep. the biggest, uh, the, the best way to create a lead. Um, yep. So where is it easier for you to deny them CS? Right here or right here? Uh, definitely further back because then we can zone. Right. So right here, you don't really have all-in potential because they're right next to their turret. So if, right. if we keep pushing and if we crash every single wave into the turret, we will never be able to deny them from getting experience. They might sure they might lose some some gold to the turret because the turret is gonna steal last hits, right? Yeah. But we will never be able to deny experience, which is the ultimate goal for us. Right, right. So when we're winning lane, we need to find a way to make them uh, go behind a little bit. Okay. Does that make sense? So by yeah. you by pushing this are giving up the opportunity to actually deny them, and as the side effect of this is also being vulnerable to gang. So you do a good job at putting the vision, um, uh, making sure that you have the vision to, to keep the pressure on. But realistically, right, right now, your win condition is not going to be to take these plates. And I want you to stop thinking about plates mm -hmm. as something that is worth playing for early game because it really isn't. Plates should be well. something that you take when, when it's free and when... Like, you know, you've just killed their bot lane or forced them off to recall, and you don't need to reset. But I would rather have you play 
to zone them off and create a level lead because if one level is worth 600 gold then when you have when you're up one level it's like being up four plates right right and that's if you yeah. take them solo and usually you, you would be sharing that gold with your support does that make sense right yeah no, so, for sure. so there's a lot there's a lot more value for you in the 2v2 um to deny them xp rather than to keep pushing do you agree yes okay when you do that to people, they will either um, leave the lane and go ruin, some, ruin someone else's lane because they're tilted, or they will eventually uh, overextend because they're sick of not getting the CS, and then they just die. Like This this thing is so, so effective, and it's effective because no one really does it in, in lower ranks. People only abuse this in higher elos, um, because when you're taught to play the game, you're taught, um, okay, you need to... Uh, clear the wave and then hit the turrets uh, because if you kill all the turrets, you win the game. Um, realistically, there's there's extra steps on the way. So when you do this, your enemy AD is not really going to know what to do about it. They'll be they'll get frustrated and they'll start uh, making mistakes. And that's when you can really capitalize on this. And then once you once you kill them, then you can you can keep up the pressure and maybe maybe go for plates. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. I want you to kind of shift your idea of laning phase and what your objective is from taking the turret to denying and getting an XP lead. Okay? Oh. Okay.